Looks like today is baklava day and I am out of pistachios. Get down to the grocery store and the only variety they sell are the white ones known as peanuts. So I got some honey roasted peanuts to use for this. I'm going to be using two thirds cups of butter with one half cup of vegetable oil for the in-between layers. And for our syrup, we're going to use one cup of honey and one cup of water. Going to use three cups of peanuts and one package of phyllo pastry. To begin with, we're going to put a small pan on the stove. We're gonna set our heat to about medium. Then we're gonna add our butter and our vegetable oil. Now what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna like melt the butter and this is gonna be our in-between layers. So in between the layers of the phyllo pastry, we're gonna be spreading this mixture and this will really enhance the end product. Now let's prepare our peanuts while we're waiting for that to melt. So this is just a hand blender and I just dumped all the peanuts in there and put on the lid and then start pulling the rip cord like we're starting a lawnmower and and it will mash it all up and nice little pieces just like what we want. If you don't have one of these just use your food processor or you can manually cut them with a knife or you can get a mortar and pestle. There's a lot of different ways you can make peanuts smaller. So we're going to get a pan that we're going to be using. We're going to use that as a measuring guide because our phyllo pastry is quite a bit larger than the pan we're going to be using. So we'll just open this up, just get out of its plastic bag and get the little piece of scotch tape off of it and fold open the sheet, set your pan on top, and then cut around it with your knife and there you have perfect sized sheets to use for it. And on the right hand side there, those are paper towels that I have coated in water. And it's a really good idea to have a wet cloth when you're working with phyllo pastry because it dries out really quick. So I just put down a towel there and that's my butter liquid. And there we go. The phyllo is covered in the paper towel. And we're just going to add a butter liquid to the bottom of this pan and we can let the adventure begin. So one layer at a time and then buttering in between each one. That's kind of the way that we do this. Actually, that's pretty much the standard way of working with phyllo pastry. I've seen some people do this where they do two layers and then butter. And you can really get away with that on this type of dessert because of the amount of layers that it consists of. There's just so many of them. As well as the end syrup that goes on it really soaks into it. So really good that way. Now the way that I'm going to be doing this is 10 layers of phyllo, then one layer of filling, then another 10 layers of phyllo. Other recipes have different amounts of phyllo in between the layers. Some have more, more layers with filling on them than I do, but this seems to work out okay for me. So now we'll put our layer of peanuts on, kind of spread them out right to the edges. Spread them evenly and give them a little bit of a push down on them as well so that they kind of stick in. And then more phyllo pastry. And one thing I want to point out that I'm not doing the greatest here is after you take each layer of phyllo pastry, make sure you put your paper towel, wet paper towel on top of them. Because once your phyllo starts drying out, it sticks to itself and starts to tear and it becomes very unwieldy to use. So make sure that you have a damp towel on your phyllo pastry at all times so that it doesn't become too unwieldy to use and just start ripping and tearing and it can be kind of frustrating so just something to be aware of and it once you get in your rhythm too of uh, putting down the different layers and then buttering it up and it starts to go pretty quick it becomes kind of mindless at a certain point but it's good that way and once we're done with all of that it's time to start the cutting process I'm going to be doing the simplest cut which is squares and the cutting method is you start at the edge and you don't go all the way across instead you rotate the whole pan 180 degrees and finish your cuts that way that way you're not ripping and tearing away at the phyllo pastry and doing the squares is the easiest way to cut it a lot of more fancy and more talented people will cut them into diamonds or fancy shapes but that's just not going to happen here for me 
struggle enough just getting it to come out good and square so you got to kind of hold it as you cut or else it kind of drags and it can be a little bit frosting that way and then once you're done cutting into the oven you go 325 degrees approximately 40 minutes and while this is in the oven we can start working on our syrup so we'll get a saucepan on the stove set our temperature to a medium high and then we'll add our honey to it and after we have all our honey added we'll add our water perfect now we're just going to let this get to a boil and then we're going to reduce the heat and let it simmer away it doesn't take very long to come to a boil it's a small amount of liquid and once you see it start to foam up like crazy then you know it's time to reduce the heat you want to make sure you keep an eye on it in this process because if you're too late in turning down the heat you can have it boil over the pan and make a bit of a mess and that's kind of unfortunate so once you see it start to bubble up turn down your heat and give it a little bit of a stir and you'll be fine and then reduce the heat till it kind of stops simmering then turn it up a little bit so that it does and you can kind of fine tune it and then you can let it simmer away for the rest of the time while your pastry is cooking a nice slow simmer because the pastry takes so long to cook okay looks like our baklava is ready and our syrup is just about done so we'll move over to our baklava and we'll take our syrup over there with us just have the baklava sitting on a cooling tray then it cool off a little bit before I pour this on and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to pour it in the cracks and try to fill it up so that everything's nice and moist you don't want it like swimming like it's baklava soup but you do want a lot in there because when it cools off it's actually gonna soak up a lot of the moisture of this syrup so in my case I was able to use all of it and it's not too swampy and there's our finished product and it's delicious let me know how you make your baklava in the comments below if you like this and would like to see more like this, please subscribe. And until next time, stay awesome.